Hi everyone, today let us create a punch needle piece together. I will walk you through the full process. The finished look is rich in texture. At the same time, the kit was deliberately designed to be an easy start for any beginner. And that's the magic of painting with yarn. This piece is named The Garden on June 1st. It is designed by myself and the inspiration comes from my garden in the early summer. I'll put the kit's link in the description if you want to make the same piece. To do a punch needle project is a relaxed feeling for me and for many others. And it took a nice piece for afternoon to finish. Hope you will love learning this technique as well as the outcome. Now let's get started. The side with the pattern is the back of the piece and we will work from this side mostly. The other side is the front and it will be displayed when it's finished. The punch needle we will be using is an adjustable one. It can create four different height of loop. The longer the metal part is, the higher the loop it will create. It is the secret weapon to create a textured punch needle piece. To start, we will need to thread the punch needle. Use your finger to block the opening of the needle, then take the threader, push it through the small hole in the needle's tip. Then take the yarn to put it through the threader. Pull the threader out, leave about 3cm of yarn in the front. Now it's time to make our first stitch. Let us start from this hydrangeas area. Set the punch needle to height A to make the highest loop. Push your needle into the fabric until the handle touches it. When pulling out, the yarn will be held by the tension of the fabric and stays in it. And then slowly pulling out the needle, just until you see the tip of the needle, Keep the tape close enough to the fabric and then move about 3 or 4 holes forward and then do the next punch. For each punch, you want to push all the way until the handle touches the fabric. We want to make the opening of the needle always facing the direction you want to go so that it will always make smooth stitches. When doing our stitches, we want to make sure the yarn is laying freely on top of our hand. It is loose and there is slack on the side. Now let me demonstrate what will happen if we forget to free the yarn and there is tension on the behind. As you can see, now the yarn is under my hand and so it is not loose and free. If we do stitches under this situation, the tension will be preventing the yarn from staying in the fabric. The loop will be shorter or even the yarn will not stay in the fabric at all. If you find on the front there are uneven loops or the yarn won't stay in the fabric, check if there is tension pulling out the yarn. It's always the number one reason. If you want to fix this problem or any other mistake, it is quite easy. Just pull out the yarn and use the punch needle's tip to scratch the cloth gently. The magic happens. The big holes disappeared like nothing happened. Gently pull the yarn from the back of the needle until you feel the tension and then redo the stitches. Changing direction is super easy. Since we want to make sure the opening of the needle always facing the direction we want to go, we could gradually rotate the punch needle as we go. For each area, we do our first lap on the contour of the shape and then fill it in lap by lap. Just like that, the shape will be filled in with yarns. When you finished a certain shape, Slowly pull out the needle until you see the tip of it and then use the other hand to press firmly on the yarn while pulling out the needle furthermore. Then leave about 1 cm and snip the thread. Wow, let us take a break and feel these cute furry loops on the front. Now let's thread the punch needle with another yarn. It is a beautiful combination of merino wool yarn and cotton yarn. Set the punch needle to height B. 
The way to fill in this area is the same as the previous one. The next yarn we will be using is the brighter one within the two green yarns. Set the punch needle to height C. Using the same technique, let us finish this area. Since the height of the punch needle is shorter, we could make our stitches denser than the previous areas. That is, make our stitch every two or three holes. Keep in mind that we always want to leave slack on the side. Now let us change to the darker green. Still use height C for the punch needle to fill in this area. Use the same yarn and set the punch needle to height D. When filling in this area, let us leave four shaded squares blank for now. We will use another yarn to fill them in later. Now we get five squares like this. When we flip to the front, we will probably notice the gap we left aside seems to be invisible for now, and it is okay. And now let's do something different to make this piece more textured. We will be using this blunt yarn needle. Use the same feather to thread the needle. Cut off a section of the yellow yarn. We start from the back side of the frame. Push the needle in from the lower left corner and pull it out from the top left corner. Tie a tight knot to lock the yarn in place. From now we can flip the frame to the front and work from the front. It will be easier for us to keep an eye on the neighboring areas. If you look closely, our fabric is made of grid. So when we push the needle in again, we could find the hole just in the next column. This way our pattern will be all parallel and neat. When we choose the hole to put the needle in, we want to make sure the hole is not already hold yarn, like this one because the needle will possibly bring the previous yarn out too. What we want to do is to choose a new hole to place our needle. When doing so, if the yarn is running out or if we want to finish an area, we can flip to the back again and tie the tail onto the yarn so that the yarns are all securely attached with the frame. And then we take a new section of yarn and repeat this process. Alright, now this area is filled in with yarns. And then repeat the process for all similar areas. When making stitches for this area, leave this shaded square blank for now. I'm using diagonal lines to fill in this area, but you could still use vertical or horizontal lines as you want. They will all look good. Now we are really close to the finish and let us add some highlights to this fiber art project. Take this fox fur yarn, thread the punch needle as we did just now. Set the punch needle to height A and it's time to fill in these four shaded squares. It is quite fun when doing so. Then we take this yarn, cut up six sections, with each section about the same length of the frame. 
Thread the needle with one section. Put the needle in the frame from the front and then push it back to the front. Just like that, one stripe of tassel was made. Let us make three stripes of tassels in the lower row and then three stripes in the higher row. Take a look of our project now. It is normal that sometimes we will get this sort of super high loop. We could just snip it off. As an art piece that we usually hang on the wall or place it on the shelf, the yarns are quite safe because they were held by the tension of the fabric and will not fall out unless being pulled out with some force. To make it even more secure, in this kit I provided a felt backing with adhesive tape on one side. You could stick it carefully on the back of the frame. Please note that once it has been stitched onto it, we do not want to peel it off again, since it will possibly bring the yarn out from the fabric with its sticky side. Congratulations! You have created your own punch needle art piece. I hope you love what you've made with your hand and that you enjoyed this whole process. If you haven't got the skid and wish to do the exact project yourself, you could find the skid in my Etsy shop Tiny Hand Rocks. I've also put the link in the description below. If you like the video, click the like button and it will help me a lot. Have a nice day and see you next time. Bye!